Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know what, Brian? There's a lot of things going on out in the crop right now. And when we're thinking about all the things that we could manage out there, bugs have to be at the forefront of your mind at this time of year because they can really sap a lot of energy out of plants like our soybeans, for example. We're going to talk about probably the worst soybean insect at this stage of the game, soybean aphids. Even though this year's crop is certainly not in the bin, well, I guess depending on what crop you're raising and where you're at in the country it could be, but for most of us, we have a long ways to go yet in 2013, but I'm already thinking about 2014 and of how I can make are. a few more dollars <laughs> on the farm. So we're going to talk today about buying some products early to hopefully save some money. Well, you're already worried about next year, Brian. I'm thinking about controlling our Weed of the Week this year and chances are you are too. We'll talk about our Weed of the Week later in the show, but first here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about corn reproductive stages. Now, I realize we're standing in tiny little corn right here, some very late planted stuff, but there are a lot of corn plants around the country that are entering these reproductive stages. And if you're a non-farmer and you're driving past these fields, we want you to know what some of these stages are. Well, okay, first of all, when we're talking about small corn like this, don't think, oh, well, reproductive stages are a month away. Yeah, they are, but even in the small plant like that, if you split that stalk open and you look down right in the core of that stalk, you'll already see the growing point, which will eventually become the tassel. Now, when we get to the tassel stage, that's technically the last stage of vegetative growth in corn, but it's also really the signal of when that reproductive stage is getting started. Yep, and let's also talk about little corn like this because even at V3 corn, so we're talking maybe four inch tall corn, ear shoots are initiated. So ears are already starting to form inside that tiny little corn plant, and that's the reason why we wanted to stand out in this little corn today because that's really where it starts, but Technically, we're going to say reproductive stages start at silking, which is right after tasseling. Okay, so we've got tassel, and the tassel comes out, that's the male portion of the corn plant, and it's going to shed pollen. But that pollen needs to be caught by the female portion of the corn plant, which is the silks coming out the end of that ear. So you've got these silks are actually a tube where the pollen will land anywhere on that tube. It can land way out at the end or, or somewhere in between the start and the end of that tube. And that pollen's gonna go down the tube and fertilize each individual kernel on that ear of corn. Now you may be eating an ear of sweet corn right now and you say, well, wait a minute here, I'm missing a kernel here and there. That's very possible. Maybe one of those silks didn't get fertilized, or maybe it got clipped off by a bug. It's very important for farmers to protect corn at this stage because those silks are so important. We see a lot of insects trying to chew them off because it's the, the freshest growth out in the field, but farmers will take very good care to make sure we don't have bug problems at that stage, and then they'll hope that we have some good weather. If it's blazing hot and dry, it's really tough for that corn plant to get that pollination done. But if temperatures are moderate, and we get uh, good insect control, chances are we'll have good pollination. So what happens, again, is each one of these little silks attaches right from where the kernel is going to form, and that goes all the way outside that husk. Then when it catches the pollen, that pollen will go down, fertilize that, and so each individual silk then, once that kernel has been pollinated, once it's been fertilized, it's going to detach, that silk is going to detach from where it was attached on the ear. So once it's detached, it's not connected anymore and it dies. So what that means then is the silk will turn brown. And that's the next stage that we talk about after silking, it's that brown silk stage. It's not really technically one of our stages. As a farmer, I always say, has my corn reached brown silk yet? If it has, then I know my pollination is complete. Well, once those little kernels are actually fertilized, well, actually, the next stage will be blister stage. They'll look like a little blister, a little bump there at first, and then eventually they will grow as we move on through these stages. So the different corn reproductive stages after that point, after that kernel is pollinated, are blister, milk, dough, dent, and then after that, we'll get to physiological maturity. At physiological maturity, when you pull each individual corn kernel back off the ear, then you should see where it appears to be black right at that point. We call that black layer. So as a farmer, we're always looking for black layer. Now, once that kernel reaches black layer, it's still, in most 
most cases, like for us, for field corn, it's not fit to combine, or at least we don't want to combine it right at that stage. We want to let it sit in the field for another one to three weeks to dry down a little more because what we need to store in a grain bin is 15 or 13 percent moisture corn. If that corn has 35 percent moisture at black layer, we'd have to spend a lot of money drying the corn down. We'd like it to be done naturally instead. Well, there's certainly a lot of things going on in a cornfield. Even with corn this small, some of those reproductive stages are already being set. We're already starting to get ear shoots initiated. We already have the tassel down deep inside that corn plant. All those things are coming. And a month from now in this field, we'll be at those stages, but in other fields across the country where you see tassels out right now and you're starting to see silks coming out the ends of ears, that's when reproductive stages are getting started in corn. Well, one of the things that can delay all these reproductive stages and maturity in corn is if that cornfield was to have way too many weeds and our weed of the week could be one of the worst. We'll tell you what it is coming up later in the show. What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready to extend soybeans, an advanced soybean product with tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate. Roundup Ready to extend soybeans. Extend your control. Today's Case IH equipment is packed with industry leading technology, and Titan Machinery has the experts to make it perform to its maximum potential. We have a team of specialists and the entire Titan Machinery Network to provide you with the expertise to keep up with today's advanced machines. Whether it be for your Case IH planters, sprayers, or precision farming equipment, our experts have the answers to get the most out of your equipment investment. Maximize your productivity with Titan Machinery, better solutions. What's new for 2013? Challenge 2050. Challenge 2050 is a two-component system consisting of a nutrient and a biological additive. This groundbreaking fertilizer contains mycorrhizal fungi, which provide an extended transport system that allows water and nutrients to be delivered directly into the root. Challenge 2050 can increase yield and efficiency of your standard fertilizer program. Challenge 2050 is the future of fertilizer. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get Challenge 2050 today. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is ahead above the rest. Your equipment's ready. The seed's in the barn. You have a strategy to overcome the challenges you'll face and your crop protection products are pretty well locked in. But maybe you still haven't finalized your fertilizer plans. If not, visit agroliquid.com today. With products formulated for superior nutrient uptake, unsurpassed application flexibility, and proven by years of extensive research, this may be the season to take your yields to the next level using agriculture liquid fertilizer. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. It's a good thing that Brian likes talking to bankers because he already wants to buy a lot of our inputs for next year's crop <laughs> right now. Well, the only reason why I do is we're trying to get ahead all the time. And if I can cut my input costs a little bit, not that I want to have fewer inputs, I want the very best products, I want the most possible that I can put out there and still increase yield profitably, but I want to buy it at a good price. Well, and that's the real key. When is the best price? And when you think about almost anything that you're going to buy. Like for example, let's say you want to buy a new winter coat. Probably the best deal might be right now because it's the farthest away from when you're actually going to use it. And if some store has winter coats, well, they'll probably sell it cheap just to get it out of there to make room for stuff that's actually moving right now. With fertilizer and propane, right now is the time that farmers really don't need it. It's a long time until we're going to use it again. And accordingly, oftentimes, it could be the lowest price time of the year. So I'll go back on this propane thing. Let's start there. That one's relatively simple. Typically, you're going to find the best buy of the year in the middle of the summertime. Now, it doesn't always work out that way, but this is just something that I learned probably 20 years ago from a guy who was in the business, super sharp guy, and my dad and him were talking, and he said, just always buy your propane in July. 
And yes, you aren't always gonna hit the low in the market, but on average, you're going to be lower than just about everybody else. So we've done that ever since, and it's really paid for us. But yeah, I mean, probably two years out of 10, we aren't gonna quite hit the low. But we do have a good idea at this point what's gonna happen with the corn. So if I'm plant standing in super late planted corn like this in the middle of July, what do you think the odds are that's gonna be wet in the fall? probably pretty high. So chances are I'm gonna need some propane come fall. Now last year, when we were in the middle of a drought in July, you could say, ooh, this corn is gonna be done real early. Chances are we're not gonna need a lot of propane in the fall. So you gotta kinda look at these things and weigh it out. This year, if I had to guess, I would guess that propane will probably be less expensive now than in the heart of the fall when everybody wants it. Well, and one thing too, you can kinda spread your risk out a little bit. Let's just say that you have a very large propane tank at home, but you have to refill it a couple of times. So take at least one load right now and you can maybe buy another load later on if you need a whole bunch of drying at that time and you'll spread your risk out a little bit. You get one load bought cheap. Maybe if you have to buy some in the fall, oh, okay, well, I had to pay a little bit more for that, but it's gonna average out to be a pretty good price. The other thing you can do is get a bigger tank. That's what we did on our farm so we can hold semi-load quantities and that gets your price down a little bit too because every time when they bring the semi out, it's a lot less than when they have to bring one of their small trucks out in terms of cost. Okay, now, sometimes you can buy things ahead but actually not take them till later. Is right. propane ever one of those yeah, things? Yeah, absolutely. That That's something that we'll typically do in our operation too. Some falls, and probably this one, we're gonna, we have a lot of acres of corn. I look at it and I say, oh man, we didn't get our corn in as early as I would have liked. We had a lot of late day corn. I'm guessing that we're gonna need three semi loads of propane come fall. So we'll take one semi load right now, and then we'll buy the other two now for shipment or delivery this fall. All right, now when we think about fertilizer, this is a little different because you know what, Brand, for our farm, we use a large quantity of fertilizer because we got quite a few acres. And you say, well, man, what am I gonna do with all that fertilizer? I don't have this huge facility to store it. What are your options there? Well, you can store it yourself on your farm. I mean, for us, we've got a couple of old sheds that they're really not that great. I don't mind if we've got some fertilizer in there and that's what we'll do is store some fertilizer. But here's the way I always look at the fertilizer thing. If we're at just about the all time high price for fertilizer, do I really want to load up now or am I had to just kind of gamble and risk it and say, you know, I'm going to take my chances later on. So that, well, that's some, where it gets to be debatable. Is, sometimes you take those chances and you get $1,300 phosphorus per ton. <laughs> it's possible. But yep. you know, yeah, if you're at the higher price. Now it's the same thing like with grain marketing. And this is one thing that our dad always told us is, you know, forward contracting's fine, but it better be your dream price. And if you say, well, I can lock in $4 corn, you know, that's nice. But if your dream price is seven, it's probably not the best idea to lock in four because you still might get seven, you never know. Now on fertilizer, it's the same type of thing. If you say, wow, we're way up towards the most I've ever paid for fertilizer, you know, chances are it could come back down and you may just wait and do it later. So one of the things that we've always looked at is when are all the elevators, when are all the fertilizer dealers in the country loading up? A lot of times that's probably when you want to load up too. So typically on our farm, we're loading up in August and September and we just encourage you to take a look at it and maybe you only bring in 10, 20, 30% of your needs and get started that way. But like in our case, we'll bring in 100% of our P&K needs in August and September some years because we say, well, we think this is a pretty good deal. Uh, we want it for tax benefits. We want to have that fertilizer so we can apply it in the fall. I don't want to wait until spring. We want to get our fertilizer out in the fall. I mean, there are just a lot of things for you to weigh out. So the reason why we're talking about all this today is, you know, there's the agronomic side of things, but then there's also the economic side. And we just don't want you to get in too much of a bind on this economic side so you can't do the right agronomic things. So always start out and look at what are the very best things I can do agronomically. Now, how can I get all those things that I want bought at as good a price as possible? And a lot of times buying real early is going to do it. But again, like Darren started with, you probably have to have a good relationship with a banker in order to be able to buy next year's inputs before you've even sold this year's crop. Now, one one last point, Brian, is if you're buying fertilizer at a high price, make sure you're marketing crop at a high price too. We've seen too many guys over the years that maybe they marketed their crop at $5 corn and said, wow, $5 is great, I've never got it, but they didn't buy any fertilizer. Now all of a sudden the fertilizer prices come up yep. to a real high level and the corn went up to $6, and now you aren't in a good position where you can right. make money anymore. So if you're gonna lock in fertilizer, 
typically we like to lock in crop at the same time. Now you could certainly do that on the board or you could actually forward contract at a place you want to deliver to. I mean, that's certainly up to you how you do that. Just consider that. If you're buying fertilizer ahead, you may want to market some crop ahead too. Well, all these things are nice to talk about and the economics of stuff, but you know what? If you don't have good weed control, you're not going to raise much crop to sell. So we'll talk about how to control this week's weed coming up later in the show. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. There are more mouths to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrack technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. Soybean aphids. Darren, it's our old nemesis. And you know, it's funny because prior to about 13 years ago, we'd never even seen aphids before on our farm. And here we are 13 years later and we've sprayed every single year at least once. Well, I would say this, we had seen aphids, just not in soybeans. We'd seen some yeah. pea aphids in alfalfa and that kind of thing. And, and we'd seen a few uh, Corn aphids, leaf aphids out in uh, wheat and that kind of thing, yep. but never in soybeans. Soybeans were such an easy crop. We just had yep. some bean leaf beetles and that was about it. All of a sudden soybean aphids were just devastating yields. Okay, so this is going back to something like 2004. There were a bunch of universities that got together and decided the economic threshold was gonna be 200 250 aphids per plant. Since then, we've done a whole bunch of research and we found 250 aphids is probably quite a bit too high. And here's the other thing, since 2004, you look at what was our soybean price back then? Half of what we have today. What was the cost of insecticide treatment? At least double what it is today. Insecticide's dirt cheap now, full rate for two bucks, it's nothing. And then besides that, we were back then getting 30, 40 bushel yields. Well, now on our farm, we're averaging close to 60 here in the last five, six, eight years, something like that. So. All the economics have totally changed, which means if we're talking about an economic threshold of wind spray, it is absolutely no longer 250 aphids per plant. Well, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And really, when I first started getting into agronomy, I, I would ask my dad all kinds of questions. And I said, Dad, I don't understand this threshold level for insects. And he's like, all right, well, what are you asking about? And I said, well, so you're telling me I have to wait until I find 250 of these things sucking on every one of my plants out in my field or on 80% of my plants or, or whatever the threshold may be. I have to let all this damage happen first, then I can justify treating? He's like, well, that's what it's really saying. I'm like, doesn't it make a lot more sense to 
oh boy, I see some numbers and they're growing. Let's get them on the yep, early but side here's and stop the, things. Yep, but here's the thing. We don't want to go out there and kill a bunch of beneficials until we absolutely have to. So in other words, you might have a bunch of lady beetles out there and they could wipe your soybean aphids out if let's say you only had one per plant and they eliminate these things. That's awesome. We don't have to spray. We save the $2 an acre we would have spent on insecticide. Okay, but the problem is if you get up to 10 or 15 or 25 or whatever it is, there's a tipping point there and the beneficials, they're not going to catch up soon enough. So it was interesting. I think it was Purdue back a few years ago they decided oh let's just let them go and see what happens well the beneficials they grew their numbers grew and eventually they eliminated all the soybean aphids but when they got to the end of the season they realized uh oh our yield is significantly down we can't wait and do that anymore well the good news is a lot of these products can be tank mixed with other things so you can tank mix the pyrethroids for example together with fungicide together with foliar fertilizer possibly make sure you're checking on all this stuff first try it out on a small scale before you do it on a big scale also you can mix them with herbicide but when it comes to lorsban that's where we get a little bit concerned i don't like to see lorsban mixed with fertilizer or with certain herbicides because you can end up with a little bit too much leaf burn so just be a little cautious with that well there are so many products out there that you could potentially be spraying at this time uh, it's important to talk with whoever your dealer is in your area because there may be a generic version of something that would normally mix just fine but all of a sudden the generic has a little different formulation yeah. and you could have some issues so just double check before you mix anything and certainly do a jar test first before you mix things as well yep and one last thing when you have any bug feeding on your crop whether it's soybean aphids or something else, you are much more likely to have that crop getting disease. So that's where a fungicide will likely pay more than normal. Well, unfortunately, killing all the bugs and stopping all the disease does nothing for our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what will stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our Weed of the Week is buffalo burr. This is something Darren and I used to have to try to pull on the farm when well, this, we were growing up. This is one of those weeds that I'd always tell Brian, oh man, I can't get this. It's too big for me. And he would run over, you know, <laughs> thinking this big, strong brother, he'll go pull that weed. And it was buffalo burr. And even if you had leather gloves on, those spikes could get big enough that they would actually penetrate a little bit. And especially yep. if you had a hole in the glove, you'd be in big trouble. So, you know, we didn't have a lot of buffalo burr on our farm growing up. We had a little bit in the pasture and feedlots. We had a little bit in some corn and soybeans and wheat, but never a huge problem. But there are some herbicides that can stop it. All right, let's start pasture. What's your best recommendation? Well, in pasture, personally, I like Grazon. I like having a little bit of Tordon in the mix, but just straight 2,4-D at a high rate can do a decent job on buffalo burr. All right, corn pre-emerge first. Well, in corn, I really like Verdict if you're out there in a no-till situation, because then you get all that sharpened. But I also like Balance Flex. That's a nice one that does have a little extra kick if you're getting some rain along the way. All right, post-emerge status is probably the best choice with just, I mean, it's the same thing with a lot of other weeds too. Status is very broad spectrum. All right, let's go to soybeans pre-emerge. Well, soybeans, I like to have a little Pursuit in the mix if I can, so I can use something like Authority Assist. I could use the old Pursuit Plus, Optil. All those options can do a decent job. But if you want to save that That's the uh, thing. If you use that Pursuit Pre, you can't use it post anymore, and it's probably the best post option. It's Well, I wouldn't say that, but it is a good helper for something like yeah, a Flex sure. Star or a Cobra that are going to yep. do a nice job burning the buffalo burr down. Again, with this weed and soybeans, you've got to get it real small. So do a nice job. Use a good pre-program, then come back in post fairly early and include some Flex Star or Cobra in. All right, and finally in wheat, I'd start with Sharpen, and I'd finish up with Wide Match and maybe throw a little Tank Mix Partner in too. Well, buffalo burr is certainly not the most fun weed to have on your farm, but there are a lot of different options to get it under control. That's it for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready.
this time of year, there are a lot of fungicides being applied in corn and soybeans. There's a simple equipment tip to help them work better. I'll explain in today's Iron Talk. Brian and I get a lot of questions about which foliar fungicide to apply each summer. There are some differences between products, but there are also some big differences in performance based on how any fungicide product is applied. Fungicides can only protect the leaf surfaces they're sprayed on. Without great coverage, your performance, even from the best and most expensive fungicides, will not be up to par. Here are some tips, pun intended, to help you get the most from your fungicide application. Start with flat fan nozzles. Yes, they produce finer spray droplets and are more susceptible to drift. You need those smaller droplets to get good coverage, though. Next, bump your water and spray pressure up a notch. On our farm, we spray 10 to 15 gallons of water and 40 pounds of spray pressure to get good coverage. Depending on the crop and which diseases that you're concerned about, chances are you'll want to get good coverage all the way down to the bottom of the plants. The reason I bring this up is most people want to spray fungicides either with Roundup or with the same equipment that they sprayed Roundup with. That means big spray droplets and lesser coverage. Make these suggested changes before spraying a fungicide and you will get better performance in your fields. That's it for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. Today's number is three. You can see it everywhere and it can stand for almost anything. But when it comes to protecting the nitrogen that feeds your crops, three is the special number that sets Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager apart because Nutrisphere N has proven to reduce all three forms of nitrogen loss, which adds up to keeping more nitrogen and yield where it belongs. So ask for Nutrisphere N, the stabilizer that fights nitrogen loss three ways. Today's Case IH equipment is packed with industry-leading technology, and Titan Machinery has the experts to make it perform to its maximum potential. We have a team of specialists and the entire Titan Machinery network to provide you with the expertise to keep up with today's advanced machines. Whether it be for your Case IH planters, sprayers, or precision farming equipment, our experts have the answers to get the most out of your equipment investment. Maximize your productivity with Titan Machinery. Better solutions. Looking to maximize yield? QuickRoots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. QuickRoots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. QuickRoots is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, Save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new s -Cube commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for this week's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Farmers focus on controlling weeds in their fields in order to produce more food. Abundant food supplies help Americans spend less of their income on food than nearly any other country in the world. To learn how farmers do it, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.